Good afternoon, all. I'm Visagan. I lead the cybersecurity and infrastructure team for Target. I'm delighted to be here with all of you today. Target is a US-based discount retailer with more than 2,000 stores and a huge online presence as well. Target in India, with its headquartered in Bangalore, uh, has existed as a global capability center for more than 15 years. And we call Target in India as our second headquarters, providing a variety of capabilities and services to our parent organization. Uh, with that context about me and Target, today I want to spend some time with all of you talking about leading cybersecurity with the community. What you see on the screen is a number. Uh, any guesses what I'm kind of referring to here? Yeah, possibly. Uh, but I think what I'm highlighting here is the cost that is forecasted uh, in terms of cyber crimes and the impact it could have by the year 2025. That's the kind of scale and uh, problem, that's the kind of problem that we are facing here today. And up next is some metrics closer home to India. Uh, what you see there is the number of incidents that certain reported in 2022 alone that was reported to certain. And it goes without saying that when you read the news today, when you follow online stuff, uh, it is very clear that the number of attacks on government websites, government critical infrastructure has gone up by 67 percentage uh, just in last year and 50 percentage of them have been hugely disruptive. So on one side we are looking at a cost factor and second is the scale and the magnitude of the problem that we have at hand. Uh, couple that with the kind of ecosystem that we are living in, right? Uh, when I say cybercrime is getting sophisticated, um, it, it kind of has two sides of the coin, right? One, uh, you have attackers who are uh, persistent uh, and then continue to find ways to bring down your infrastructure, uh, compromise your data, or even exfiltrate data, right? Um, so when I say sophisticated, you'll have to understand that the other side of sophistication is not about an individual's capability, but the ecosystem that's available for them. Today, if you go into a dark web, you don't have to be an expert of any sorts to carry out an, a campaign against a particular organization. Uh, you'll be surprised, but I'm sure you'll be aware, the number of capabilities that are available in a dark web for a naive actor to build a campaign against an organization is incredibly easy. You have phishing kits, you have ransomware kits, you have hosting services. In fact, they hire like us. Like they do interviews, they ha do hackathons, they have swags, they have uh, things that, it, they almost run it like an enterprise. And uh, one is that ecosystem that's available for anybody who wants, who's motivated to carry out an attack on an organization. Two is combined with the proliferation of data. Um, the amount of data as end users, as organizations, as uh, enterprises that we create is continuing to grow bigger and bigger. And add to that all the easy access to all the cool new age AI, ML stuff that's available that anybody can play around and don't have to be an expert to build capabilities to make an attack against an organization. On that's one side of it. The other side is we as enterprises, as organizations are grappling with challenges to say, okay, I've got an ecosystem that makes life easy for a bad guy. Uh, I have data that is proliferating and I have automation, AI, ML capabilities that's available for the bad actor. On the other side of the fence, we all sit together and say, hey, I have resource challenges, I have uh, regulatory challenges, and you have to figure out how to carry on this fight against the bad actor. And that's my call for today's conversation today, is to about say, how do we tackle this as enterprises together? Cybersecurity, uh, we believe a target is a team sport, right? Uh, it's not a bunch of engineers and analysts who can keep your organization safe. Everybody in the organization is supposed to have a role in that. And uh, that's true for the industry as well, right? If the bad guys can get together and figure out a strategy to 
run campaigns and attacks against our organization. We, it's imperative that we as enterprises, as organizations, partner with law enforcement agencies, industry bodies like DSCI, to see how we can learn, share, and collaborate with each other so that we can put up a real good fight against the bad guys. So as you think about CISOs or cybersecurity leaders, the role is not only just to keep your respective organization safe, but what can you do to build an ecosystem and an environment around you that every aspect of uh, the challenge that you're facing today is tackled with a combined force. Um, to me, it starts with the community, all right? So as I said, it's a team sport. You alone cannot keep your respective organization secure. And an attack on one organization is not an impact only on that organization, but it also erodes the confidence of the industry too. So we are in this together. So it's important that we start our uh, engagement and effort to cater to the community. Um, that is not necessarily your own staff, employees, but your support staff, or uh, the institutions that you partner with. Here is an example of uh, something that we were able to do at Target when one of our NGOs reached out to say that uh, we have this growing problem in India about um, human trafficking. What can we do to help the Karnataka State Police that we can, we are from Bangalore by the way, so we had that opportunity to partner. Here was a small effort from the Target security team to say, what if we build an app to the police force that they can uh, readily follow instructions to tackle the human uh, trafficking case. Uh, an interesting fact is that human trafficking cases don't stand a chance in the court if you don't follow the process very rigidly. So our uh, attempt here is to build an app to say, hey, what if I can have a workflow that can help the police force on the field to immediately follow the instructions and give them a fair chance to stand in the court of the law. Uh, as an example, I'm, I'm sure all of us as uh, organizations are working with NGOs and other organizations do it. But here is my call, right? We as an industry have so much talent that is available. And it's important that we are able to partner with groups like DSCI. Uh, back in Bangalore, we have a group called SISEC, where you're able to contribute uh, and build a richer ecosystem and make sure that the security posture of the ecosystem is stronger and thereby your respective organizations are stronger too. So SISEC is an initiative of state government of Karnataka to build a robust cybersecurity ecosystem within state, state of Karnataka to invite investments to make sure that the talent is available within the industry. Uh, this was us at Target trying to make our own way, meaningful way of contributing back of committing 100 hours to, with a SISEC group to say, what if I partner with SISEC, which has access to all the academia institutions within ba uh, Karnataka, and bring those students who probably have academic knowledge of what cybersecurity is, but probably don't have real world experience of what things could look like. Again, a small effort uh, to make sure that we are able to impart the right kind of experience and knowledge to those campus uh, or the to be hired talent and bring them industry ready when they're ready to look for jobs within uh, the ecosystem. Uh, the second tangent that I want to talk about is, I'm sure nobody needs introduction or background about the talent shortage that we have. And there are multiple ways organizations are going to tackle it. Uh, looking at the talent pipeline and making sure that we're investing right in the right amount of uh, skills and bringing them on board readily available for work. The second aspect is making sure that we're able to bring in women workforce within the cybersecurity space. There is enough stats around available that calls out the lack of uh, representation. I think we have done a fair job as an industry in the last four or five years to improve representation. But the gap is not necessarily only in representation, but in leadership as well. If you look at the online stats, if you read online, you see the scarcity of women leaders in the ecosystem. At Target, we believe diversity and inclusion is a business imperative. It's uh, both top down and bottom up uh, in our engagement. What you see on our screen is our effort of bringing DSCI and a group called EWF Executive Women Forum, which focuses on building women leaders. And uh, my colleague here, Brenda, has been uh, instrumental in helping us bring 
uh, EWF and DSEA together to bring a program called Leader Within, which is a six months curated India specific program for women to ask, who aspire to become leaders, how do we sub provide that support? I'm happy to announce that we have done two batches, and with the partnership with DSCI, we've been able to sponsor close to six seats within the community so that while we as organizations have access to that, there are smaller MSMEs who have women leaders who don't have the skills, and how do we invest in them? Thanks to Wells Fargo, thanks to HCL, EWF, and Target, we're able to contribute in that way to sponsor those seats to those women. Uh, the other thing that I want to highlight is, as we look at uh, the scarcity and the leadership gap of women in cybersecurity, Target in India has invested in this platform called Target Elevate, which is our flagship conference for women in tech, which happens in Bangalore, and we are on our fifth year. Again, the idea is to provide a platform for women who can come, learn, get mentored, network, and also get inspired to grow into stronger leaders. Um, I'm sharing these examples not to say that Target is just only doing it. I'm sure each of your organizations are doing in their own capacity, uh, CSR work, uh, academic partnerships, and things like that. But the call I have is the challenge that we have is monumental. We do really have to skill up and then broaden this network and make sure that every CISO, every security leader sees it as an imperative Thing to make sure that we are able to invest in the community, invest in talent, invest in diversity, invest in industry partnership, invest in forums like DSCI to make sure that this ecosystem continues to thrive. And as I said, we stand a good chance of making sure that we put up a good fight. Uh, I touched upon some of this here, but I just draw your attention to two things. While we spoke about our partnership with DSCI at the national level, at the state level we have this partnership with SISEC where uh, CISOs across different organizations within Bangalore have come together, partnered with SISEC, to see how we can help build an ecosystem that can tackle uh, talent shortage that can talk, uh, talk about what kind of challenges startups should focus on, um, how do we promote diversity and things like that. Uh, interestingly, this year DSA also did an innovation cohort of handpicking six organizations within India to come together and say, how do we think broadly about cybersecurity in the nation? How do we help the nation become a hub for cybersecurity investment? How do you make sure that we chat? address challenges in academia, diversity, community, uh, skills gaps, and things like that. I conclude my talk here, again, drawing your attention to saying that there are multiple ways as CISOs, as security leaders, as security organizations, we can give back to the community. And only if we are stronger together, as a nation, we can have a stronger security posture. So pick what you're comfortable with. It could be diversity, it could be investing in academia, it could be helping a startup uh, prototype an idea in your organization, it could be coming to forums like this and sharing best practices of what's working well and what's not working well. As I open my remarks saying that if the bad guys can help each other and uh, succeed against us, we, we can also put a stronger fight by coming together and making a meaningful impact both to our organization and to the community. Thank you.